second race of the weekend here at Donington Park for classic stock catch about to get underway for the 12th round of the championship Lee Scott could become champion in this race uh, Mervyn Beckett's got his first pole position the race gets underway then it's him and Dan Gibson on the front row looks like Beckett makes a good start uh, third look like Andy Philpott for that position on the grid and then Ryan Lowry should slot into fourth it was Lee Scott though who started that fourth position and he should be finding he had a relatively good result in this one he should become champion so down the crane of curves they come for the first time Beckett already starting to pull away but it's side by side for second because Andy Philpott is going around the outside of Dan Gibson out to fourth is Matt Rhodes and here comes Philpott on the inside of Beckett as well he goes for the lead Phil Wilson is off the circuit Damien Cottrell around the outside there and a very smoky Greg Dowie there it's Derek Rosier goes past him as they head up towards Schwartz Kerr for the first time in the 13 minute plus one lap race. And there is Phil Wilson. He's pulled off then. He started on the ninth row of the grid. He's got that going though. So an intermittent problem it seems with him or him. So he rejoins the race. On board we can go number 34, Ben Ward. This is the ex Alex Hawker. Now, he's not following the car in front. That's the smoky car of Greg Dowie, possibly dropping oil onto the circuit. So Ben Ward sensibly keeping off of that line, just in case there is any oil going down. Just to let you know, Paul Thorpe and John Hill after incident yesterday won't be starting. Neither will Andrew Thorpe. So we have 18 starters. But I think Greg Dowie will be for the pits at the end of this lap as they turn their way into the chicane and the car slides possibly in its own oil and Greg Dowie spins uh, into the gravel trap so he's I'm out the race there but let's go back to the leaders and Phil Pops did take the lead away from Beckett I thought he might have done down at the old hairpin at the end of on that first lap they're coming back down towards that part of the track now there's about the a third and for fourth it's side by side Lee's got up on the inside and goes ahead of Matt Rosier Brian Lowry in there as well so it's sixth for the lead into the old hairpin and Lowry goes through as well he's gone on the inside of Matt Rosier Damien Cottrell behind goes inside of Martin Kaiser Beck, uh, Damien Cottrell runs out wide all over the grass good battle back here this is Ben Ward and almost side by side behind Phil Burden was looking up on the inside of Mark Webster there's the number 64 car as, um, up into McLean's Dan Gibson muscles his way through ahead of Mervyn Beckett Beckett was looking himself up on the inside of Andy Philpott but Gibson found himself an XR2 car with and he went up on the inside to take that second position there's so much Philpott that now leads in second is Dan Gibson and in the third is Mervyn Beckett that's the opposite way to which they qualified on their second best times as the uh, second race grid is determined Phil Pott with a little bit of a gap possibly down to the chicane but heavy on the brakes Gibson is good on the brakes usually and he actually pulls himself right back onto the tail of Andy Phil Pott so they come up across the line to complete the second lap of the race and it's Phil Pott's at lead from Gibson Beckett third fourth is Scott fifth is Lowry sixth is number two that's Marty, uh, is Matt Rosier and then in seventh position Damien Cottrell with an eighth John Peerless ninth Derek Rosier and tenth is Martin Kaiser so they turn their way through the turn wide red gate corner and then down towards Hollywood and onto the crane of curves they will come for a third time in this race it should be about 10 laps I think that's what we got in the race yesterday there is the battle between John Beerless, Derek Roger and Martin Kaiser that's for 8th, 9th and 10th here are the leaders though so Gibson still putting the pressure on to Andy Philbots and a little bit of a gap back to Mervyn Beckett who in turn has got a little gap to Lee Scott and Ryan Lowry right on the tail of the championship leader and to be champion by the end of this race most likely there's John Peerless in the Persia 25 just ahead of the Persia 25 driver Derek Rosier so up towards the McLean you can see that gap that Phil Potts and Gibson have got over Beckett Lowry possibly looking on the inside of Scott he's got to watch out because Matt Rosier right behind him Derek Rosier looks to the inside of John Peerless unable to do that as they head their way now down towards Coppice Corner, there's Phil Burden, <laughs> he's just ahead I think of Keith Webster and then the 64 car that I spoke about a little ago, that's Phil Pierre but in the Citroen AX out of the chicane from the leaders and Lowry's dropped a bit now on Lee Scott and he's got right behind to the cars of Matt Rosier and Damien Cottrell's last year's champion is Cottrell, there is Lowry then out of Redgate and Cottrell's sneaked his way up on the inside of Matt Rosier to go into sixth, Phil Potts and Gibson stay in stable for the moment in first and second and the two of them now starting to break away from Mervyn Beckett more and more it seems 
So the two of them not battling, pushing on, and here's the battle for eighth. Derek Rhodes has got ahead of John Peerless now, so the 205 has swapped round. The blue car ahead of the white one. Damien Cox has had a good run there underneath Starkey's bridge, up towards Starkey Corner. He's going to... Uh, um, Stortons Curve I should say she tries to go round the outside that gives him the inside line for McLean's and he goes up into fifth place lots of understeer there for Damien Cordry you can see having to put the lock on because they went out the corner they're side by side up the road as well I think that's Dan Gibson trying to get the lead away from race leader Andy Philpotts Phil Potts still leads though as they come out of Hollywood for another lap but this has allowed Mervyn Beckett and Lee's got to close them in, so it's four for the lead. Still in the same order, though, as they turn their way through the old happy Phil Potts. Late on the brakes for that, carries a lot of speed through the corner. But he runs out wide, possibly, so... Gibson will be trying to find a way back through. There's the battle between Rosier and Peerless. They're still in eighth and ninth positions. As they exit the old uh, bin on bird, we go with Becky, and here comes Gibson. This is a strong challenge to the inside, possibly. The two cars just rub in there a bit. But they're still side by side. So they head up the hill now, up towards Coppice Corner. The inside to Gibson, the outside to Philpott, and through goes Gibson. Then Dan Gibson takes the race lead. But Andy Philpott fighting back on the exit of the corner here. So the two cars once again are side by side as they now head down to the chicane. Which way is Mervyn Beckett going to go? Because he's got a good run. He follows Philpott because he's quicker than Gibson down the straight. So now Dan Gibson, who led out of Coppice, is going to drop down to at least third position as they head on to the brakes into the chicane. It's Philpott who once again takes the lead, runs a bit wide on the first apex of the chicane before hitting the second one but nothing too much to worry about he might have to have to have the inside line here though because Mervyn Beckett possibly with that touch more power in the Vauxhall Nova Mervyn Beckett who was crowned rookie champion yesterday going for the overall race lead now around the outside but Andy Philpott slices in front he stays in front then heading up to the halfway distance in the race and they are Absolutely together the two leaders they head on to Hollywood and down the crane of curves Gibson did kick third Damien Cottrell here side by side he's trying to get ahead of the to be champion Lee Scott yes he does so the reigning champion goes ahead Damien Cottrell up to fourth and he's going to drive way past Dan Gibson is running from Mervyn Becker gets hit and overall sideways so now Gibson's got a run on him as they head underneath the bridge up towards Schwartz Curve but I don't think he's going to be able to find a way through Damien Cottrell and all the excitement flips his window wipers on He's really trying hard now to get ahead of Gibson as well. He's got Lee's got right behind him. Who's going to be trying to find a way through Gibson? Now goes to the inside of Beckett. Can't do it. Sideways goes Damien Cottrell as they head out of McLean's and head up towards Coppice Corner. And Beckett going to the outside of Philpox. Then trying to get the cut back possibly down the back straight down towards the chicane. Beckett's was good out of here last time. Gibson kicks up in the dust on the inside of the corner. So down to the chicane. It's just, and only just, Andy Philbox in the lead. Here comes uh, uh, Cottrell on the inside of Dan Gibson. Who's going to turn him first? Gibson's the one who gains the position. He's gained um, to Mervyn Beckett. So back into second has gone Gibson. The top three back in the order. They have been the majority of the race. But now Dan Gibson, he's got past Beckett. He's trying to take the lead now. Andy Philpott slow. It's a problem for the race leader. Andy Philpott, who has led most of this race fantastically, has a problem. So he's dropping down the order. So into the lead goes Gibson. He runs out very wide through Redgate Corner. So Mervyn Beckett trying to find a way through. Running out very wide is Damian Cottrell. Doesn't harm him too much though as we head on to the crack of curves but having Beckett using a lot of the road there. Damien Cottrell, he just his mirror going down the crane of curves but it's still Gibson that leads. He's staying in front of Beckett and all that. So into the old hairpin then. The XR2 of Damien Cottrell dancing under break in there for the old hairpin. Now they head up towards McLean's. Beckett all the time looking for a way through but as he goes to the outside of Gibson Cottrell goes to the inside of Beckett so who's going to come out on top of this well Gibson still leads but I think Be uh, Cottrell's got second gives a wave there to Mervyn Beckett so into second has gone Cottrell this has been a fantastic race from him where did he start on the grid down in 14th position and he's in second now and we've still got quite a few laps left of this one. Still uh, about three and a half minutes on the clock and they'll have a lap after that. And Cottrell flings his car up onto two wheels through the chicane, the first part of the chicane there. Sabley lands all back on all four. 
And now Gibson has to go defensive. Cottrell on the move. Is Gibson going to leave him over on the inside? No, he's not. So Cottrell then realises the outside is the way he has to go. But Dan Gibson's not going to give up on this. He still leads. He got his first podium in yesterday's race. Now he's going for his first race victory. And he's staying in front of Cottrell, who is last year's champion in the Vauxhall Nova that sits in third position. Mervyn Beckett's car. As I said earlier, he's the rookie champion of 2013. Right behind him, Lee Scott. If he stays where he is, he's going to become the overall champion of 2013. But it's side by side for the lead. Gibson possibly will stay for the old turf and they're side by side. Cottrell's got the inside line. So head up to McLean. The top four all together. The top three couldn't be separated by anything. And they're side by side now, the two leaders. Cottrell, oh, there's possibly contact uh, between the two XR2s and it's got to the inside back right behind the outside goes Dan Gibson and Lee Scott joining in this as well he did this last season if you remember overtook three or four cars around the outside of Coppice Corner in a very similar race to this as Cottrell gives another wave to, or is he uh, that might be him adjusting his mirror yet again that seems to go off centre every now and again so Gibson who still leads that Cottrell second, at least got in the end, didn't find a way past the out, around the outside, even though he tried it. So we complete another lap, not many to go now. Possibly two to go, I reckon. So, Beckett really hunted down Cottrell there, but unable to do anything. Gibson again takes that wide line through Redgate. He likes that, he stays in front. So on to the Craners. Still gives it then. That has that lead. Cottrell here. Brings the car up on the inside and he, go he goes through. So Damien Cottrell goes through with both of them. Run out wide. They're possibly pushing each other there on the grass. So Mervyn Beck is going to make the most. So let's go around the outside of both of them as they go under the bridge. So he's got the inside now with Damien Cottrell contact between the two cars once again. The slightest of touches in this race. Nothing too major. Cottrell flings the car sideways through McLean's, but he got the lead. So Cottrell there from 14th to 1st in about 12 or 13 minutes. Incredible stuff from Cottrell. Second is now Beckett. Dan Gibson, who led the race for ages, he's down to third. Fourth is Lee Scott. And Kaiser joining in all this. He's in fifth, Martin Kaiser. He's another person. He's come from a long way back on the grid. He started 12th. Final lap board, Dent. Last lap board is out. And Cottrell's starting to break away now from Mervyn Beckett. So they're turning their way into Redgate Corner for the final time. No one challenging Beckett, or no one finding their way past at least. As they now head on to the Craners for the final time. Damien Cottrell with this small gap now. Can he hold on to that? Well, at least Gotts now right on the tail of Mervyn Beckett. Down to what's that fifth position from Dan Gibson. Kaiser and the two Rosiers in it now. So Kaiser's gone ahead of Gibson. Then Matthew Derrick, Rosier right behind. So to turn their way into... Oh, it's happening. Dan Gibson finds his way back up on the inside of Martin Kaiser. Can't find a way through. They drift out wide. Matt Rosier, especially, they're kicking up all the dust. In third position, Lee Scott. If he stays there, he's definitely going to be the 2013 Classic Stockhouse champion. Martin Kaiser, they're trying to come up on the inside of him. Unable to do it as they now head their way up to Corpus Corners. We can t uh, go on board for the final time with Mervyn Beckett as he smacks that curb in co uh, into Corpus Corner there. Ch chucks him out a bit wider than what he would have wanted possibly so that means he has to now go defensive because perhaps not the most speed now as he uh, that would have been possible going down the back straight now they head down to Chicane Cottrell's going to win this one who's going to get second good round the outside goes Lee Scott Lee Scott goes second and Kaiser goes on the inside so both sides they go off Beckett so Cottrell's going to win second to Lee Scott and third to Martin Kaiser so two people on the podium starts well outside the top ten Murphy Beckett comes home fourth and just in fifth is Dan Gibson ahead of Matt and then Derek Rosier down in the pit so is Matt Sutton he's going to have an interview with our race winner uh, David Cottrell Second place, Lee Scott, and third place, Martin Kaiser. I'll take that. Um, David, yeah, I'll, I'll bet you're glad you came back now to this sort of race. Didn't you pick up your first one of the year after, I think it's just.
budget for the council. Uh, yeah, it's my first win this year. Um, had a terrible day yesterday. Qualifying just didn't work out for me at all. Um, I'll take this opportunity to probably apologise to him for Paul. Not because he's a big accident yesterday, Paul thought. And um, he was even kind enough to lend me his battery today. Because without that, I wouldn't have been here at all. So thanks, Paul. I hope you're uh, enjoying it. Oh, he's upset in the bunch box. <laughs> Is that you, Mary? And you were like a hot night uh, through back there because you just can't wait to pick them up. Comes to the lead. Yeah, um, you know, close racing, everyone. There's no doubt you're driving, they're all just teeth and sometimes it's close and there's a new tap and tap and tap. So I've got to go to that image and drive the car and make them.